the object that I'm, I'm colliding with a can. Yeah. And then we set it to deactivate so we don't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. Give ourselves a point. And then we actually sent this also to our text here so that we can see how many uh, values there. This is the canvas in the 4.6. We have our new GUI system. Uh, definitely check out the, the blocks afterwards at Unity. We will record this tutorial more in depth with everything. Mm -hmm. And there you can see then this value here. I sent a value to those uh, text to show it there. Mm -hmm. And we also have here a menu mate right, that when I press play that it comes in, I animate it. And then you can click play again to play the game again. Okay. Um, awesome. every, yeah, everything of this project will be uh, tomorrow available on our asset store. Uh, check it under the 10 Planet 2D art. Uh, the level, the scenes, and the scripts will be all available Great. for the community. So you can mess with it yourself, make yeah. your own endless runner game. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully, you guys learned something uh, and stick around for the next session. We'll take a quick uh, 10 minute break. Hi, welcome back to developing 2D and 3D games with Unity on Windows. I am here again with another good friend of mine, Matt Newman, for what is, to me, I think the most exciting <laughs> session of the day, just because uh, I'm a developer, and uh, I think I'm you know, okay on the development side, strong on the development side, but on the art side, I can draw a mean stick figure, and I think that's about all I can do. <laughs> so, we actually uh, get to create some stuff, too, which is pretty cool. I think everybody likes to see that, too. Yes. So Matt actually put out, uh, well, tell us about yourself first. Okay, so my name is Matt Newman. Um, I run a small little studio called Subscience Studios out of Tustin, uh, California. Uh, we're an indie game studio. We recently completed work on a, uh, there's a game for the band Avenge Sevenfold, if anybody's heard of that. It's called Hail of the King Death Bat. That's launching on mobile devices very, very, very soon. Uh, before that, I, I worked in another studio called Mad Menace, and I created a game called Grave Stompers, which you can find on all mobile devices nowadays. It's on iOS, it's on uh, it's on Amazon, it's on Ouya even, it's, it's everywhere. So definitely check that out. It's, it's a really cool game that, that I made. Um, and then, yeah, today basically um, we're just going to get together and do some 2D assets and create some stuff. And I kind of wanted to show you my process, my workflow, and like what I do when I create assets for the games. Um, and then we're just going to go run with that. Um, so this is indeed Module 3, 2D and 3D asset creation. And... You put out something interesting out into the chat room earlier, uh, asking the folks. Yes. So, yeah, we, we put a, a question out there saying, you know, what kind of character would you guys like to see me create? And we got a, a bunch of really interesting kind of choices out there and different, you know, everybody had their, their different characters and what they wanted. Uh, what I thought was cool was Triceratops, just kind of, I don't know, I love dinosaurs. That really kind of struck me. And then we kind of... Tweaked it from there. We did uh, Alien Triceratops, Cyborg Triceratops. <laughs> kept going with it. Yeah, and then we ended up going with a, bar a Barbarian, Cyborg, Alien Triceratops, like hybrid creature. So anyways, uh, I, I kind of doodled a little bit while the, while the comments were going on, and we did create um, a version of that, which I can actually bring up here and show you. Um, this was just a really, really quick sketch of something that I was working on. Um, but right here, this was just literally while the comments were happening, so I just kind of came in here and started doodling a sketch. But uh, we'll get back to that when we get to the, the 2D creation, and I'm gonna refine that and actually show you my workflow of, of taking this sketch and actually bringing it in to Illustrator, creating the different pieces that you could then make move and do different things to Very create cool. like a skeleton-based character for a 2D game. And also doing it in vector too. So when you do things in vector, you know, it's, it's really important, I think, to do your character designs in Vector because not only will you have these great crystal clear assets that you can use in Unity and, and other places, but you can export it in all kinds of different resolutions for marketing materials and other things like print and whatever you use it for. So it goes beyond just the game. So it's a really, really great way to do your character. So we'll get, we'll get to that when we get to the 2D character creation. I but I think to start, yeah. Both of us have young kids. Yeah, we do. And uh, so uh, <laughs> you ever seen Despicable Me? Oh, yeah. I'm Vector. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I hear the word Vector, which is often it, that goes through my head. So uh, let's talk about a module overview, what we're going to be covering today. Matt's going to be going on a title screen. and Yeah, so we're going to start with a, a title screen creation. Um, we're going to show you the different elements that make up a title screen when you do make a title screen. Um, we kind of came up with a concept 
you know, for this event. And uh, it was really, really quick. We did it over the last, like, <laughs> I think four days. We kind of knocked this thing out. But uh, we came up with, it was Zombie Pumpkin Slayers, which is basically, yes. yeah. Yes. It's, uh, it's kind of cool. Just like a yes. off the cuff, yeah, was, zombies are cool. Halloween's around the corner. So it was the perfect type of, of game to create <laughs> in the last minute. But we basically, um, yeah, we created a zombie character. We created some uh, enemy pumpkins. Uh, a level, we created a cool branding for it, um, a title screen, all the elements that you need to basically kind of start uh, your own kind of indie game. We just kind of wanted to get it there, give you some cool stuff, you could run with that. We're gonna have all the files available after this that you can download and kind of see what we did process-wise. Um, we'll get to that later on where, where everything's gonna be. But yeah, to start, um, I kind of wanted to show you guys, you know, I always, I always start with the branding. Whenever I create an indie game or a concept or a character, um, you know, I start with doodling the character, obviously, but then you gotta think about, you know, what is the title of this? What's gonna grab like the, the user when they see this game? And so with this, we wanted to start with the title screen of the game. So for Zombie Pumpkin Slayers, um, I'll actually pull it up right here. Let's see, if we go, just give me a second here and we'll load this up. Um, we, uh, I wanted to do something that was very in the vein of, of zombies and, you know, pumpkins and slaying and all that. So we, uh, I'll show you right here. This was kind of the uh, end concept of what we uh, ended up running with that we, we really, really dug. I, we wanted it to take place in a graveyard. I, mean, I did make grave stompers back in the day, so it was a perfect scenario for this to take place. And the I'll loose, yeah, the loose kind of theme in the story for this mobile game was we wanted these evil pumpkin patches to basically be spawning pumpkins and taking over the cemetery from the zombies. So you're actually playing the zombie, protecting your cemetery from these evil pumpkins. Hence, you are the zombie pumpkin slayer. So tell and us so, the, kind of the overview. What would I do if I want to create a title screen? So to create a title screen, um, first you want to, there's different elements that you're going to need to create a title screen. One, you're going to need the logo, obviously, which we have here in Illustrator, this kind of zombie pumpkin slayer yes. awesome thing. <laughs> um, and then from that, you're also going to need um, your options buttons. So, you know, play and options and all that different kind of stuff. And you probably want to style those or choose a font or anything that's kind of in the vein of what you're doing. I think a lot of people... Sure, sure. You know, it's very, very common, and they just don't have the right font choices in the things they do. So you, you just want to kind of keep everything in sync and kind of in the realm of what you're trying to create. There's lots so, of great font sites on that they can download. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, abstract fonts, I use that all the time. There's there's a Duff font. There's the all font. these different sites out there that are great, and, and they're free. And there's lots of freemium fonts to use. And take advantage of this. Go through, and, and what's great is you can actually type in the name of your of your game, whatever game is going to be in a lot of these font sites and preview the fonts and go through the different categories and kind of say, oh, that looks good. And you can kind of see what it looks like. And then from there, you can download that font, create it, bring it into Illustrator, and then start tweaking it and making it how you really want. That's now, cool. for this game, I kind of did something different. Um, usually, I, I, I did kind of a hybrid. I used one font that I found off a of font site for the Slayer portion because I just wanted that really crisp and clean like That's a cool. Slayer. Um, but the zombie pumpkin, I kind of just wanted to go off with my art skills and do something kind of different. So for the zombie portion, I actually sketched this all out. Um, this is kind of my process I use a lot. Um, you know, this whole thing was done in Illustrator. As you can see here, there's all these different, it's, it's just all vector graphics. It's all traced with a pen. Uh, I do things in different layers and then I'll cut things up and, and just kind of piece it how I want to and piece it all together. Um, I use outlines a lot to kind of just reinforce the, the different um, elements. And then I also do collective outlines to kind of really just bring it all together. Um, but for this, I'll show you the sketch here. So if we go into Photoshop and First thing I did, I, I like to start on, on pencil and paper. Um, it's just kind of my way I do things. So I started with this, you know, just a really quick pen mock-up of a zombie logo. Like that's where it started. So this is the first step you would do this in is, creating a title screen. Yeah, the absolute first step, you know, and I'll just bring this in Illustrator so we can see it kind of side by side. Let me just grab this whole thing here so we can do that. And how long did it take you to sketch out that kind of little quick text there? Um, this uh, didn't take too long. I, I would say this is probably less than 10 minutes of work just kind of hmm. going through and just thinking about, you know, and it's not perfect. I mean, you look at it, it's just very, very loose, right? It was just kind of like zombie. Because I know with Illustrator, you know, I'm going to use this as my reference layer. It's like a template layer. But from there, I can actually take this graphic I made and really refine it and do something cool like that. So you can see the finished product is very, very similar to the sketch that I initially created. But doing that, you know, having this kind of loose sketch as my guideline, gave me the ability to, to really kind of start playing with the elements and adding things like, you know, really refining the look of the stitches and just kind of like cleaning it up and making it crystal clear. And what's cool is, you know, obviously now it's vector. I can use this on anything, right? T-shirts and games on the side of a bus, like sure. whatever. And it's, it's always going to look crystal clean and great. Um, it's out no matter how big you make it. 
Yeah, exactly. And then with pumpkins, you know, I was kind of like, well, okay, I'm gonna try to incorporate pumpkins in there somehow. And, you know, I was thinking about the shape of the pumpkins and the coloring. And so, you know, I kind of, I kind of threw some little pumpkin nods in there with the shape of these peas and the way that the pumpkins look in here. And it kind of just wanted to do that. Like it almost looks like it's carved out of there, kind of like a pumpkin, just to kind of reinforce the, the differences between the two factions in the game. You know, you've got the zombies and you've got the pumpkins and they got to look different, but have it in the same logo. So I think together, and then from there, you know, I added these little I, I thought just the pumpkin vines would be pretty cool, just as like a, a detail element on the logo. You know, you want to have something in there. I might even go back and add some actual evil pumpkins on the side or something like that. But I thought this kind of really helped tie it all together. And then the Slayer, just for me, I figured it needed to be something crisp and, and clear, like cool. you know, like a like a, a Slayer would be. <laughs> a slayer would be. <laughs> yeah, like a blade. You know, I wanted it like a blade or some kind of weapon, like just something that really reinforced how you know, the Slayer feel. Um, so yeah, there you go. You know, you start with that. You start with these different elements. Um, when I'm in Illustrator um, and I bring an element like this, I always, um, if we look at our layers in Illustrator right here, um, so you can see there's this little option on the side. If you go over here and you can make it a template layer. So I always make, and you see everything kind of goes like translucent when I do that, right? And so that gives me a, a nice guide to work from because it's not harsh blacks and whites because you can't see what you're working on. It gives you kind of a gray and white version of what you're trying it's to do. It's almost like that's your tracing layer almost? Abs it's like a tracing layer, absolutely. So you can bring your sketches in and then use it as a tracing layer. And I use that not only for logos, but all the characters I make and the different things, I use that exact same thing to basically you know, trace what I'm doing. I mean, you're really just tracing and refining and making it look crystal clear and, and nice. I guess right. the advantage of computers, you can refine and yeah. erase and refine, erase. Yeah, and, and I would say the main tools I use, so you know, when I'm an illustrator and I bring that sketch in, make it the template layer like we did, you always want to make a new layer above it and call it whatever, just keep it layer two for now. But I'm, I'm, I'm notoriously bad <laughs> with naming my layers, which many people are, so don't, you know, don't layer feel too one, bad. Yeah, two, yeah. Three. And, and people I work with, they always say that, you know, the layers, I have an issue with that, so I always go back. But I think that's, that's the artist, right? That's the artist in you, the creative, you know, sometimes you just just want to run and, and get things made and that's what you have to do um but i do suggest naming your layers i don't don't <laughs> not do that um but yeah from here you know we can see okay i have the zombie logo it's kind of grayed out here the template layer and i always just grab my pen tool and uh, i fill it with black to start and then i just start tracing out the logo you know and, and illustrator has some some pretty good lock recognition going on so it kind of knows when you're tracing over something mm -hmm. where to lock certain things so you can kind of go through and trace each individual element. And then you throw them off to the side too. So like I made that Z, I throw it off to the side. Then I go back and I want to do like, a, you know, maybe the O, I'd rather just use the ellipse tool and I can just... That was our next cool question. O. How do you do the irregular yeah. kind of shapes like you, that? Use some, of the, use some of the tools that they have. Um, the direct selection tool um, right here next to the actual selection tool is how you select like, almost like in 3D where you select your verts. This just kind of gives you a really good area where you can, you know, grab a portion of it, kind of contort it to the shape you're trying to get. So I have that kind of oblong looking O. And these, these same tools exist in virtually any of the uh, vector graphic programs, right? So the free one like Inkscape, Absolutely. Illustrator. Absolutely. You do the same. I, I, I would be shocked if they didn't yeah. because this is pretty much how it's done nowadays. Um, but from there, you know, you get your shapes. You want to block out your major shapes on your logos, you know. So I'm making, I'm just kind of going through and, and tracing these different elements just kind of getting those shapes, those big shapes. And I always just kind of throw them off to the side, you know? And once you make them, just kind of throw them off to the side and then range it later, you know? Because you just want to get these. You don't want to be drawing over things, you know? Just just take one piece at a time. I like to buy a V, a B? Yeah, I know, a B, <laughs> right? A yeah, you just come through and, and for things like bees, you know, I always use these like kind of triangle shapes like that. And then there's another tool in here called the anchor point tool, which allows you to get these really nice arcs. Oh, cool. So, and that, that kind of that kind of goes in hand with when you're doing like custom shapes, you can get nice curves on them and things like that. So with that B, you know, you have, you just get all the shapes you want. Just kind of go in there and you do each each piece. And then when you're ready, bring them back in or bring them back into position. And you can add more points to them too, because that, that's a very simple shape at the moment. But if I wanted to, you know, add some more curves to it, kind of like what you see in, in the logo, how it has these nice little arches and curves and different things like that. I just go through and, you know, add more points to it start using that anchor point tool to, to kind of, you know, make some curves and different things just to kind of make it unique. Pretty cool. The same goes in font creation too. When people make fonts, it's the same process. You know, they're sketching things out and they're just building it in Illustrator and bringing it over to font programs. And oh, things. that's how so, they do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that that's essentially in a nutshell how I create the logos. And then each piece I do, so we'll just start with the Z right here. Let's just say that was finished and I, I was happy with that Z. 
you know, I wanted it a green color, so I'd actually choose the, the, the color picker and turn it to like a nice green shade I wanted to. What I like to do is kind of outline my, uh, my pieces just to kind of get an, a nice def defining shape for them. So I'll just duplicate that Z, which is shift alt if you happen to know, want to yeah, know the hotkeys. Hot key. Yeah, I'm a hotkey key madman on these things. <laughs> so shift alt is the way I duplicate it. And as you can see, when I do that, it gives me two versions and I kind of just arrow it around until I get it in place or snap it into place. Um, I always send it back to the background. And just to make a quick outline, you can just take that piece you just